All right, Andre, I have your quad finished up. Here it is right here. So this is a Airblade Intrepid V2. It's the three inch pro version. Um, you have the Emacs 1306B 4000 kV motors. Uh, you have the Mamba stack. You have a AKK FX3 Ultimate VTX. You got an XM Plus right here. You have a Swift V3 with the M8 lens. Um, I think it's a 2.1. Yeah, 2.1 lens on there. You got the Vifly Finder 2 buzzer. Uh, fun fact about this buzzer. So I learned a couple things about it recently. I already knew actually that it had a button on it, but I forgot about it in the other one because I just got done building this exact same quad for Tanner uh, a couple days ago. And here I am building this exact same one again. Uh, people really like this Intrepid frame. But anyway, um, the Vifly buzzer. So it has a button on it that you can use instead of having to plug in the battery after you're done flying to turn it off. You can just hold that button down for like three seconds and I'll show you after I plug in. Um, another thing about it is, I didn't know this, but it has a super bright blue LED on it. And at nighttime when it's dark, the beeper will stop beeping and it'll just have that bright light. And then when the sun comes back up again the next day, it'll start beeping again and turn the light off. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I have no idea how it does that, but it's pretty awesome that it does it. Um, you have the Furious, um, the Air antenna pretty awesome antenna it fits nicely in this mount too um uh okay and then the props are the hq 3040 tri-blades and i think that's about it so i do have smart audio hooked up we'll make sure that that's working but the button for the vtx um i'll show you real fast but with the battery out, you can see the button for the VTX is right there. Very easy to access. All right, so let's put this back on. So, I'm Here's the video works perfect um i guess you probably want to turn that off on the run cam the run cam osd but underneath that the regular osd is on you might be able to see that um i also flashed the xm plus for rssi and you can see rssi is working you might not be able to see because it it's so small but i can see it it's working all right and uh let me arm it okay we're good to go so let's do a little hover And here we go. Man, it's got a ton of punch, and that's only 3S. Wait till you fly it on 4S, you're gonna love it. All right, so I'll show you real quick, um, pushing the button to turn off the buzzer. So you just unplug your battery. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, what's going on here? Okay, I didn't hear it beeping. Yeah, it's not even beeping at all. Oh, it came unplugged. Don't want that happening. I don't know. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I had to pull that out to show a guy how to swap the wires around. I forgot to push it back in. Oopsie. Okay, let's try that again.
All right, let's say you go fly around, you're done flying, you come back, you land, you unplug the battery, and it starts doing that. Push the button for three seconds. One, two, three. There you go. It's a lot easier than having to push the battery back in and turning everything back on, you know, risking the chance of frying something on accident. So yeah, it's a lot easier to do it that way. So there you go, Andre. I uh, hope you are happy with this. It turned out nice, I think, and it flies very well. It's on uh, Betaflight 3.5.6. Let's check that the uh, smart audio is working. I, I'm always wondering about that with, oh wait, no, this isn't the new one. Okay, it should be working then. Let's check. But I'm talking about smart audio 2.1. I had a lot of problems with it lately. So anyway, um, here we go. Let me put the cap on. Okay, so we're gonna have features, smart audio. Yep, it's working. So this VTX has 25, um, and then it goes to 200, then 400, then 600. So 25, then 200, 500 means 400, and 800 means 600. So we'll set it to max power. Go down, set, confirm, yes. You hear a little beep, a loud beep actually with this buzzer. <laughs> Back down to save and exit, and there you go. So, yep, smart audio is good to go. Uh, and if you didn't know, if you didn't see what I did, you go throttle middle, yaw left, pitch forward, and that brings up the menu. And then you use this stick to go down and over to pick it. Okay. So there you go. Enjoy. And uh, I will get this boxed up and send you over some tracking. It's kind of a pain in the ass to have to do this, but totally worth it if you ever were to crash and eject the battery for sure. So, all right, thanks man. Okay, so there's one more thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, and that is that the Swift 3 has camera control uh, and I got it hooked up, so I'm going to show you how that works as well. Um, I'm fairly new to it, so, you know, um, I don't know every everything about it, but I'll show you what I do know. So, to access it, you need to plug in the battery. Oops. Okay, so that's how you access the OSD. Throttle middle, yaw left, pitch forward. Okay. Now, to access the camera settings, you go throttle middle, yaw right, and see it says remote mode. Okay, and then you all right again, and that'll bring up the menu. So I'm going to get rid of that stuff for you. Um, oh, wait, actually, I don't know how to do that. Hold on. I don't know if that's in these settings. Because that's just the camera settings. But what about when you press and hold up on the little remote? Now that we don't have the remote, what do you do? Oh, there, wait, nope, that wasn't it. Hmm. Let's see. Hold up. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you just hold up. So we'll turn that off. Oops. Off. Off. Off exit and then to get rid of remote mode I think you hold left yep okay and that's it so now I got rid of the camera OSD so now I just have the regular OSD